Today we're going to learn about something called control structures inside PHP and a control structure is essentially a way for us to navigate the code in different directions. So if we want something specific to happen depending on something else, then we can leave the code elsewhere and do something else. If that makes sense. We have many different types of control structures. We have conditions, which we're going to talk about today. We have switches. We have a new thing in PHP 8 called a match. We do also have include, so we can include other files into our code. And then we do also have something called loops inside our code to output code multiple times inside our browsers. So there's many different kinds of control structures, and we're going to talk about a few of them today. We're not going to talk about all of them since there is a lot to talk about, um, but we will get to more of them as we continue this course here. But for now, we're going to focus on something called a condition, a switch, and we're going to talk about the new match thing that we just got inside PHP 8. So now we have talked a bit about a if statement before because we have used it a couple of times up until now in the previous video. So essentially what you do is inside your PHP code, you go inside and create a if statement. And inside this if statement, we can write a condition inside the parentheses to only run the code inside the curly brackets here if that condition is true. So it's important to point out here that we're not talking about if the result inside the condition returns as true, but if the condition is true. So if I were to go inside and say that we have a Boolean, let's create a variable up here. I'm just going to call it bool. And I'm going to set this one equal to true. So we're not actually checking what is assigned to this Boolean up here. So if I were to go in and actually copy this and paste it in, we're not actually checking if it is returning as true. I mean, right now we are, so this is actually gonna run the code, but we can also go in and check if it's not true. This is actually also a operator that we forgot to talk about in the previous video, but essentially I'm going in and I'm checking if this statement is not true then I want to run the code inside the curly brackets. So we're not checking if this value up here is true, we're checking if the condition is true. Okay, whatever we're checking for has to be true. I just want to make sure people are not confused about that. So with that said, uh, what we can do is we can actually go in and we can create a variable. So I'm gonna create a variable and called A. I'm gonna set this one equal to one. And then I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to set this one equal to four. So what I can do inside my condition down here is I can go in and use one of the operators that we talked about in the previous episode where we actually compare some of these different data. So I can go in and say, you know what, I want to check for variable A and see if it's lesser than variable B. So in this case, I can go in, say, is variable A less than variable B? If so, then echo out first condition is true. So in this case, if I were to go back inside my browser, refresh it, you can see we get first condition is true because it is in fact true, one is less than four. But let's say I want to check for multiple conditions inside one check here. Let's say there's two things that needs to be true. What I could do is I could go inside my if condition here and just copy paste another if condition. And then we would say, okay, first we check for this thing. If that is true, then we go inside the statement and then we check for this thing and then we output something else. That is one way to do it, but we do something what is called nesting, which is not really looked upon that fondly when it comes to programming, uh, since this creates a very weird spaghetti, um, messy code, and that's not really what we want to do when we're doing programming. We want everything to be very neat and tidy. So instead, what we can do is we can go outside and we can use one of the operators that we talked about in the previous episode. So I can go inside my if condition here and say, you know what, I also, want to check for something else. So if A is lesser than B and our Boolean is true, then run the code inside the condition here. So in this case, it is going to run because our Boolean is set to true up here. And just remember, just like before, I can also check if my Boolean is false by going in and adding the exclamation mark to say I want to check for the opposite. It is also possible to do something else, which is to go in here and say, is our Boolean equal to false? Or well, as it is right now, if I want to check if this Boolean is true, then we can also just say, is it true? And then this would also work, but it's just kind of a habit for programmers to you know, look a little bit more professional and actually check for a Boolean if it's true or if it's equal to false. So using the exclamation mark here is something you should get used to, I think, because it is just a shorter way to write things and it makes you look a bit more professional. Now in this case here, it's not actually gonna run this condition because our Boolean is true and I'm checking if it's false. So let's say I want to check for another thing. If this one fails, I want to jump down to another condition and check for a second thing. What I can do is I can go down below and I can create something called a else if statement. 
And an else if statement basically is just a chain that we chain behind our if statement and says, okay, so if the first if condition is not met, then jump down and check for the next one in the chain list. So what I can do down here is I can actually go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and check for the same thing. But this time I want to check if our Boolean is equal to true. So in this case here, we would actually output something else. Now, don't get too confused about my code jumping back up behind each other because you can write it like this or you can write it like this. It doesn't really matter. But because of my plugins inside my my little text editor here, uh, it automatically jumps back when I save. So don't get too confused about that. It's a way for the text editor to tell us that this belongs together. This is a chain. So therefore, it jumps back behind it, which I think is a little bit weird, but that's just kind of how my plugin works. So what I'll do is I'll go inside and I'll copy paste my echo and I'll say the second condition is true because this one would actually be true then. So we would have saved this, go inside my browser. You can see that now we get our second condition is true. And when it comes to a else if statement, I just want to point out that you can write it like this in two words, or you can combine it into one word and this would do the exact same thing. It is kind of a habit for PHP programmers to have it in one word, but in pretty much every other language out there, we, we split it into two words. So the way I prefer to do it is using two words as well. So now when it comes to adding these extra conditions behind the first if statement, whenever we want to add more, we just simply go in and add another else if statement. So we can just continue just pasting and pasting as many as we want to create this huge chain where we check for a new thing. And the important thing to note here is that whenever you hit a certain condition and it returns as true, so let's say this second condition up here is actually true, then all the other conditions below are not going to run. So it's going to stop right there and it's just going to output whatever's inside this condition and it's going to stop everything else from being checked. So in this case here where every single one of the conditions are pasted below are actually true, it is only going to output one thing inside the browser because like I said, it's just going to stop the rest from running. But now let's say we want to have a fail safe. What if all of these fails to get run inside the browser because all the conditions are actually false? What we can do is we can add a default behavior. So if I were to go below here, I can add a else statement without parentheses and then I can write some code inside of here. So we can copy paste, paste the echo in and say none of the conditions were true. So we can actually do this last effort here in order to say that something has to be output, even if none of these are actually returning as true. So let's go inside all of the else if statements and just add a exclamation mark just to kind of say that, you know what, all of these are going to, you know, essentially be false. So we're going to save this, go inside the browser, refresh it, and then you can see none of the conditions were true. Right now it says none of the condition were true, which is not right. It's not plural. There we go. <laughs> But you kind of get the idea here. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and decrease these because these are a lot of else if statements. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Now let's just go ahead and change this one so it doesn't, you know, fail. So we have the second one is actually succeeding. So again, if I were to save this and go inside the browser, we now get the second condition is true. So with this, we now talked about these if else if else statements. However, we do also have something called a switch inside PHP. Now, a switch is a little bit different. I do tend to see a lot of people are confused about when you use a switch compared to using if else if else statements because they kind of do a little bit of the same thing on the surface. Uh, but let's go and create a switch and then we'll talk about uh, how they're different and when you should use one or the other. So in this case, here, I'll create a switch, which is using the switch keyword parentheses and curly brackets. Now, inside the parentheses, we want to include whatever data we want to check for. So in this case here, let's just go ahead and check for variable A. So I'll paste it inside the condition here. And inside the actual switch curly brackets, we're going to write a bunch of cases, which is kind of the same thing as checking for all these if else if else statements down here. So I'm going to go ahead and write a case. And then I'm going to say what should the value be of variable A. And if that is the value, then we'll run this block of code here. So I'm going to write the case keyword. And then right after we have to tell it what we're checking for. So if variable A is equal to something specific, then run the code inside this case here. So in this case, I'll check if A is equal to one. It's important to note we're not writing case one. So like this is the first case and then the second one has to be case number two and, and so on. We're checking for the actual value inside this case here. So if this were to be a string, let's say we had Daniel in here, then I could also be checking for a string called Daniel in this case here. So what I'll do is I'll just go back. So we had the number here. 
And inside the case number one, let's go ahead and create a colon and then say whatever code is in here, we're going to run if a is equal to one. So I could, for example, echo out um, the first case is correct. And you can write as much code as you want in here. So we can also write more code down here below. If you want to do that, you can just keep writing code. Um, but the important thing is that once you're done writing the code that you need to actually get run if that case is equal to one, is that you can go down below and add a break to tell it that now we're done. This is the breakpoint of the first case. So all the code in between the break and the case up there, so everything in between here is going to get run if this is equal to one. And we can, of course, add more of these. So we can just go below here and say, you know, we have a second case. And now I want to check if the number is three, for example. Then we can go inside and say the second case is correct. And just like with else if statements down here, we can just keep pasting more cases behind it and check for different values right after the case keyword here until we get something that is correct. But let's say we run into a scenario where none of these are correct, just like we did below here. Let's say we, you know, we don't have this else statement, uh, but none of these conditions are true, but we want to run some default code if none of them are actually correct. What I can also do inside the switch statement is I can go down and I can write default and then I can include some code below here so we can actually echo out something else. So we can actually say none of the conditions were true. We just copy paste it up here. And this will be what gets echoed out if none of the cases above are actually going to return as true. And now some of you may be asking, okay, so when do we use a switch compared to using a you know bunch of if statements? Because they're pretty much doing the same thing, right? The difference here is that inside a switch statement, we're checking for the value of a certain you know, piece of data. So in this case here, variable A, whereas inside a if condition, we can actually check for multiple things. So we're checking is A lesser than B and is Boolean equal to false. So we can change it. And then even in the next else if statement, we can check for something completely different. Whereas inside a switch statement, we're checking for one thing in all the different cases down here. So if you want to check for one specific value and then depending on that value, you want to run a different set of code, then you could use a switch statement. But if you want to run different types of conditions that checks for different things, then you can use a if else if else statement. And just to show you what exactly is going on here, because right now, let's say I want to go in here and I want to check for the number two. And then I want to also write another case here and I want to check for the number three. What we can do, let's say third, just to have everything being correct. What I can do is I can actually recreate this condition down here to show exactly what is going on with the switch up here. So if we were to go down here, you could say is variable A equal to one. That is essentially the exact same thing as this first case up here. So if we were to go down to the else if statement, I can now check is variable A equal to two. And then I can add another one behind it. So we can actually check for the next one, which is, is variable A equal to three. So just to kind of show this is what the switch is doing. It is comparing the same data to different sets of results. Let's go ahead and comment out the switch and also the if conditions down here. And let's go above the switch and create a match. Now a match is a little bit different from a switch because inside a switch here, we just basically have a block of code that deviates into different directions depending on a certain result. So if variable A is equal to something specific, then we run a different piece of code. However, when it comes to a match, we actually have a variable, so we can call this one results. And then we set it equal to our match keyword parentheses and curly brackets. Now, because this one is a little bit different than a switch statement or a if else if else condition, we do want to add a semicolon at the end here because this is the exact same thing as creating a variable to so be called this one result. And then we set it equal to some piece of data. And then in this case, we would actually add a semicolon behind it. So this should have a semicolon behind it too, because it's the exact same thing as going in here and then creating curly brackets because we still need to have that semicolon. So with that semicolon, what we can do is we can go in and say, you know, what? we're going to check for a certain thing. So if variable A is equal to something specific, then we want to return a value into our variable result depending on variable A. So I can go in here and I can say, you know what, if variable A is equal to one, then we can go ahead and assign a value, which is going to be variable A is equal to one. 
And in this case here, we're not actually going to add a semicolon. We're actually going to add a comma because we're creating a small list of items here. Uh, so what I can do is I can copy paste this below and then I can say if the data is equal to two, then I can assign the data called variable A is equal to two. So in this sort of way, we're just adding a different piece of data to a variable depending on what the result is. Now it is important to note here as well that the last condition you're checking for in here should have a comma behind it. This is how it's supposed to be done. So you do want to make sure there is that comma behind every single condition. So don't go down here and add a third condition and then delete the comma because this is the last statement. Uh, just go ahead and make sure you have a comment behind all of them. I do also want to mention here that you can check for multiple pieces of data inside the same condition here. So you can actually go in and say, okay, so if variable A is equal to one or it is equal to three or it is equal to five, then I want to insert variable A is equal to one inside variable result. So using a comma, when we want to tell it what we're checking for here, then we can separate different conditions and then output the same data inside variable result. So just to output this inside the browser, let's go ahead and go below here and echo out variable result because in order to actually get something inside the browser, we do need to echo it. So doing this and going back inside the browser, you can now see that we get variable A is equal to one. Another thing that's important to note here is that we're doing a more strict comparison type when we do any sort of comparisons inside this match statement here. What I mean by that is we're actually checking for types as well. So if we were to check for variable A being one, three or five, but variable A is equal to a string that is equal to one, then this is not going to return the actual data in here. So if we were to save this and go inside the browser, you can see we get a error message that says uncaught unhandled match error, which is the default error message you're going to get if none of the actual checks in there is returned as any sort of data. And just to mention it here for the people who do need to see it, it's the same thing as going inside a condition and then checking for variable A being equal to one, but we use two equal signs. So this is a very loose comparison. So if variable A is equal to one or a string called one, then it doesn't matter. But if we use three equal signs, then it's going to be a strict comparison type, which means we we'll also need this to be the same data type. But now you can also do a default output inside a match statement. So if you want to do the same thing as inside the switch down here, where we have a default or with the else statement inside the if conditions down here, then we can do the same thing when it comes to a match statement by simply going in and writing default and then point to some kind of value. So we can go ahead and say we want to point to a string and say none were a match. So now we have something default in case none of these are actually true. So right now, because variable A is equal to a string, which is called one, then none of these are actually gonna be true, but we're still gonna get an output inside the browser because we have a default return. And again, now the big question is when do we use a match versus a switch versus a if condition? It really depends on what exactly the purpose is of your code. So if right here you want to have a piece of data assigned to a variable, but you want to have a different result based on something else inside your code, then you can do that very easily using a match statement. So instead of having to do a switch statement down here where we assign a piece of data to a variable we created up here, which is going to be a lot more code than simply doing this, then you can use a match instead. But if you just want your code to branch out depending on one piece of data, then you can do that using a switch statement just based on the value of one variable inside your code. But if you want to do different kinds of checks where you want to switch it up every single condition you're doing inside this chain, then you can use a if else if else statement down here in order to do different kinds of checks inside your code. So it's just kind of nice to have different types of tools inside PHP to do different things that is somewhat the same thing you want to do, but slightly different. And of course, just like with all the other episodes, this is quite a lot of information. So we will get to do more practical examples with this in the future. And with that said, I do also want to mention here that in the next video, we're going to learn how to build a calculator together using PHP. So we're going to have an actual calculator inside our website, you know, using HTML and CSS, we can type numbers into it, and then you can submit it, and then you can get some sort of calculation out of it. So we're actually going to build something using what we learned up until now, which is going to be quite exciting because now you can see how we can use PHP to actually do things inside a website. Up until now, you've just kind of been gathering puzzle pieces, but you haven't actually learned how to put them all together to build something. So that is going to be quite exciting. Uh, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.